All right, it should be live. Microphone's on. YouTube is receiving. All right, so PC Gaming Joe. Powered by a uh, Epic Game Store. Oh, that's that's a joy right there. <laughs> oh, people are gonna be excited about the Epic Game Store. Hey, well, afternoon for you. It's a morning for me. It's only ten. I don't know German, so. That's falling on deaf ears, my friend. <laughs> Hello! So I think this is the earliest I've streamed before. I typically only try to get it at uh, noon. It's 2 a.m. for you? Oof. Well, this thing should be starting about uh, seven minutes. Right now they're going on with a Q&A with the... Not Q&A, but um, serve, I guess. Um, I don't know. Trivia with the uh, Twitch chat. So that's what's going on here. It's 7 p.m. here. Oh, it's it's... Um, nine fifty-three in the morning. <laughs> Once again, um, I can't really pronounce your name because I'm not the best with the German. Felschein Jagger, Felschein Jagger, Productions, Ish, Washing the Waset, Watested, Watest, Dusesh. Will ish dine videos leben. I hope that's not like some sort of demonic curse. I'll be back later, guys. I have a good one for now. Alright, see you, man. PC gaming show is kind of boring, anyways. And it's uh, apparently powered by the Epic Game Store. So that's a joy. Um, but uh, don't. Later, I'm going to be streaming things all day today. Um, here's the schedule. So, uh, PC Gaming Show is here at 10. At 13 o'clock, or your regional equivalent, is Ubisoft. They're always the fun ones. Um, AMD at 15 o'clock, uh, and then your regional equivalents. And they have some cool stuff to show, new graphics cards that I'm very interested in. You just started World War Three, <laughs> And then uh, Square Enix at 18 o'clock, or your regional equivalents. And they're probably going to show, show out some JRPGs. And then tomorrow... We got Nintendo. I'll just leave that for now. Nope, things are changing. Let me unmute this.
Gamescom this year is going to be releasing. Oh yeah, I think that's going to be the main focus of what uh, Gaijin is going to show off at um, Gamescom is Enlisted. Either releasing it or showing off a release date. Uh, but, you know, I'm really hoping that Enlisted is like like War Thunder, but instead of grinding through tanks or planes in a tree, you grind through um, rifles <laughs> and other equipment. So you can have like a... a, a, a I, I think that would be hilarious to see. My face when you're roaming the worst streets in your city, but you're still watching the stream. <laughs> Chinese text free coming, you think? I think. I need to get that video down. I have a video I've been I haven't I have been like totally putting off forever now. Uh I think I'm just gonna like I get I'm working with this other dude. Um, now and I think I'm just gonna copy what he puts out and just make the video on it because it's basically the same stuff War Thunder is not at E3 uh, They th showed the only time they did E3 was like I think 2015 whenever it came out on PlayStation. They only really do Gamescom. I Say English from now on <laughs> I am, uh, the CT Center. If you, uh, love stock deals that fun, you get, um, back when they had a friendly fire still on, you'd spawn in a stock tank. Your friendly would accidentally shoot you in the engine block, and then you'd be stuck at spawn the entire game, or you have to J out and return the base. <laughs> it was the best. So, you know, I don't normally watch the, uh, Gib, Gib Q5. I don't normally watch the PC game shows, because they used to be, like, three hours long, and it'd be, it was, like, a talk show more of, and kind of boring. I'm wondering if they're going to do it different this time around. Um. I wonder if Epic is trying to, um, subvert, not subvert, um, usurp, uh, PC gamers, um, place in this game show. That'd be funny. Wish I have a PC. Yeah. PCs are pretty neat. Although they're very complicated. And they're a big old money sink. Like, you, it, it's... You can get good performance at a decent price, the same round as a console, but, um... You can always get more performance if you put more money in. And it's just like... Well, now I gotta get to... 2080s. <laughs> This is the PC Gaming Show, a celebration of the most vibrant gaming platform. For the next two hours, you'll see all new gameplay footage, two hours, trailers, right. and interviews. Taking the stage today are first gameplay footage for Vampire the Masquerade, Blood oh, yeah, that game. 2, Borderlands 3, the reveal of Evil Genius 2, Starmancer, Last Oasis, Looks Two interesting. New games from Coffee Stain Studios. Griftlands. Planet Zoo. Sup, noob doob. What's next for Terraria? Remnant from the Ashes. Mosaic. Warframe. Baldur's Gate 3. Shenmue 3. The reveal of Unexplored 2. Shenmue 3 is still a thing? I thought that was just a joke that... <laughs> And more. A money and sink for everyone to throw nothing at. Show hosts. Day nine Is there subtitles on... Lord. I don't know. It's a. Uh, it's Twitch. I don't even know if Twitch has morning, basic subtitles. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PC Gaming Show! Yeah! Yes! We're so happy you're here today. We have a great yeah, show. Yeah, there's no subtitle option. We got 30 <laughs> games that we're going to be showing off. 30. Some of them will be updates to existing franchises and titles. Others will be exclusive world first looks. Y'all ready? PC well, are good but unreliable. I disagree entirely. My PC is very reliable. This event would not happen each Well, it was more so it's more reliable than any console I've used. Out. It's 10 a.m. in Los it's Angeles. Just... <laughs> Happy Monday, everyone. Best day of the week. Hello to all of you up in the balcony. And of course, thanks to you tuning in live 
from all over the internet, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, weird, Facebook, staring, wherever man. you're tuning in from, welcome. We're happy to have you. My name is Day9. You too, Terry. Hey, don't event. blame you, man. Joining me is the fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Hello, everyone. Now, got to get up at four hours, oh, man. Go to bed. Time, whatever platform you're watching on, we are going to be pulling your clever comments. Just, just remember that I said clever comments from Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making you famous on the internet, on the screen. We're going to be sharing them live. And one of the things we're especially <laughs> the uh, the Twitch chat is complete garbage. Sean, so you've got a mission to put their questions. PC sucks. PS4 director. master race. That's right. Midway through this show, I'm going to be asking those questions to the creative director of Borderlands 3. Use hashtag PC Gaming Show, and we'll read them live. Until then, let's start the PC Gaming Show with our very first title from UK developer Rebellion. Several years ago, they announced that they were working on the No, it is not Michael Jackson. He is dead. A real-time evil layer. <laughs> At least I think he's scenario. dead. And now, Rebellion is ready to reveal its nefarious vision for the project. So, PC Gaming Show, who's ready to stroke a cat menacingly? Here is the world is Oof, to reveal. That didn't land well. to world domination. Borderlands 3 is an epic score exclusive for the first year, like many other games. <laughs> Michael Jackson went back to Argentina with Hitler. <laughs> Better not be another BR game. Epic game needs to die. The exclusive it, exclusiveness is cancer. I uh, well, see, like I don't really care about the exclusiveness. First of all, because they haven't exclusivized any game I actually care about, but also, uh, the, uh, like, it's, it doesn't cost any more money to download the Epic Game Store, so it's, it's not really that big of a deal, in my opinion. Maybe there's some factors I'm under, not understanding entirely, because I haven't looked at it at all, because... Now, and I haven't cared about much of the games yet. on the very first game, so what does it mean for you to finally get to work on the sequel? Um, it means that uh, a lot of people have uh, very high expectations and we have to meet those. This is some kind well, of James Bond yeah, villain BS. Uh, that's what it kind of looks like. I think you'll be playing like the evil villain dude and you'll be like have a base and then you'll like set up traps. It's like Sims or uh, yeah Sims but without gender neutral bathrooms. <laughs> Guess I have to be the one to tell you. You're dead. You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. We have one rule. You don't break the masquerade. Oh yes, the uh... This game, a lot of people are really psyched about it. A lot of people are really psyched about it, but uh... It's also Epic Store exclusive, and then they became unsucked about it. Fighting over scraps here. You don't want the Chinese to have your credit card? I can get you there. I don't think the Chinese have enough stake in the company to actually access your credit cards. But also, there's a lot of other companies that the Chinese have access to. Um, Everplay, uh, what is it? Um, <laughs> I'm totally forgetting the name of it. The, so you'll be surprised. What does it mean to be a vampire in this world? Uh, so in uh, the Emperor, uh, what what it is? It's it's kind of a darker version of our world. This guy is not good with planet, uh, talking. <laughs> need to keep their presence secret from humanity. So the vampires are kind of 
uh, staying hidden in the shadows while also needing to feed on. Why is he wearing gloves? Manipulating us. Uh, it's so weird. <laughs> We're talking about feeding on human beings. I'm getting flashbacks to last year's show. Cara, it's not just a case, though, of, of sucking blood and filling up your health meter, is it? Actually, different types of blood do different things. That's right. So we oh, yeah, the privacy policy of the Epic Game Store. Story. That's something that I could Vampires, see, see uh, an issue with. A lot of people don't care about it for some reason. Uh, like, there's some games on Steam that, like, the privacy uh, policy uh, is... China now owns you. And then they can. And uh, I've been talking to people who are like, I don't care about that. I just want to play a game. Like, dude, <laughs> Chinese like hacking your computer or whatever. And there was a really interesting. They want to play Rainbow Six Siege. Am I the only one? Uh, well, a lot of people play it. I don't have it. I'm not too into Ubisoft games. Epic Games is owned 100% by Tencent. They are not 100% owned by Tencent. They are like uh, minority owned. I think it's like probably 40% or something like that. Yeah, there's some other uh, companies that are 100% owned by Tencent though. I'm trying to remember the name of it. You actually have to adjust to your environment to becoming a vampire, right? That's right. So essentially, in the game, uh, when you were was that one? Um, vampire, uh, sort of, uh, sort of very I don't know why I'm vampire, forgetting the name. Too early in the morning for me. At the same time, um, and this thing called the mass embrace, and that means I mean, that, um, I mean mozzarella. Uh, they're having a less lucky time than you in the world. You're having a relatively good time compared to them because they don't know what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty. Uh, on their own, sure, you might sure. Family, you might have, say, uh, <laughs> a wife and children, and you are morally objecting to drinking blood uh, to survive. And so I have a less good time, let's say. Tencent will acquire time. about 5% so of Ubisoft. Yeah, that sounds about right. Tencent. Brian, the See, the issue is not the Epic Game Store. Like, Tencent is a definite issue with, it's not just with Epic Games Store, they're purchasing a lot of little bits of all of many American companies. It's concerning with U.S.-Chinese relations. And they all can't wait to play this game. Can you wait, guys? So I think you've convinced everyone here now. When are we going to be able to play the game? We're going Q1 next year. Fantastic. When can we learn more? Bloodlines2.com. Thank you so much, Brian and Cara. Good luck. Give it up, guys. Thank you so much. Now, have you ever wanted to play Dwarf Fortress in space? Nobody. So what? That is a space station sim <laughs> People apparently played Dwarf Fortress still. After a catastrophe on Earth, humanity has launched. Tencent needs to be gotten rid of. Well, Tencent is really just a. Your task is to manage a, a form of access by a Chinese life. government. So what you're saying is the Chinese government needs to get rid of. Uh, and that's a bit of a stronger they're statement. I don't entirely disagree. Uh, they're kind of um, awful. <laughs> Let's take a look at the brand new gameplay of Sarmancer. Oh, that's it. Yeah. League of Legends. Millions of people play that. It is that company, like Rage or whatever they're called, is 100% owned by Tencent. Um, there's a few other stuff that I looked up on Wikipedia a while ago. There's a lot of stuff that you would be surprised is owned by Tencent. So is this like um, that one spaceship game where you get like run from the rebels? It's just Dwarf Fortress, really, is it? It looks pretty interesting. It has graphics. They dumped a whole bunch of Spitfire. The pr oh yeah, the I saw that on the market. There was a whole, the price is real low for those things. It's funny, this has a really uh like bland trailer not very exciting but i bet this Our game is going to sell like hotcakes and like both started as modders and now they each independently run their own studio let's welcome to the stage from tripwire john gibson and from torn banner steve piggott hey sean 
now I understand. Both of you started as modders, working independently, and running your own studios. What, talk to me about the collaboration that you started together. Yeah, Steve, so uh, we've known the Tournament Banner guys for a long time, uh, even giving them some advice when they I got one too, it's not worth selling so anymore. Yeah, make the mistakes maybe if you wait a few months, it might go and, uh, up, but it's kind of doubt it. We've always wanted to work um, together. Although I've and heard the plane is pretty good. It's a Spitfire, so it has, there's something to it. Team, professional super group to <laughs> get an awesome game out to fans. Yeah, and for us, this is a dream partnership as well. Um, we've always been really close with Tripwire, and we really respect their games. Um, we see them as one of the few studios that's bringing true innovation to the FPS genre, and that's what we're all about as well. Well, let's take a look at this upcoming collaboration between Torn Banner and Tripwire. Do you watch Defective Con Man? Conan? De Detective Conan? I do not. Well, I need. I did not know. I can Google Translate and. Yeah! It's called an FPS. I don't see many uh, S going on right here. It's pretty graphics. PC gave me his sponsor for Tencent. <laughs> Shiverly 2. Oh, I've heard good things about that game, but... Like, there's a lot of games um, of that category, oh, actually. Talk to me about Chivalry 2, Steve. <laughs> well, Chivalry 2 is, is about bringing players into the yeah, like, um, medieval battle scene. Yeah, like That game looks pretty neat. Our, our flagship game mode, Team Objective, does that by having players complete medieval objectives like sieging castles, raiding villages, and, uh, and yeah, you're really, you're not just going and standing in an area and then a bar fills up. You're, like you said, burning houses, killing peasants, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> playing as peasants, getting killed. It's really about letting the player experience every iconic moment of the era. And on top of that, we've, we've, this time around, we've increased the player count scale to about two and a half times what the previous game yeah. was, to 64 players. And on top of that increased scale, we've added horses, which really allows us to add a lot of drama to the game and bring experiences like the Battle of the Bastards from, from Game of Thrones. Don't worry, we'll ignore the last season. Just Battle of the Bastards is going to be in the game. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I want to ask about the swordplay element to Chivalry 2. I mean, I know it's Love a it. really critical element. Yeah, and this time around, we've completely revamped. I mean, we really oh, well, see, here's, the, here's your favorite part about um, Chivalry 2, is it's an epic exclusive, that looks to be. <laughs> I love your War Thunder Weekly News, but this is not War Thunder Weekly News. No, it is not. Fair, and also has the satisfaction of the, and the weight that you would expect when two medieval knights in full armor are clashing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's very, very fluid and much more accessible than the previous game, and it's... You know, the, the, the pace is so much quicker. It was what I really enjoy when, when I'm playing it. Yeah, I, wanted to ask about I don't know why my pick is Fortnite. Button, it's supposed to be a panther. It's a panther for me, so. Resets, so it's kind of these discrete <laughs> I understand that the sword play operates differently than that. Yeah, we kind of think of it like... Well, here's the, actually the great thing about... Um, well, a great thing for developers and uh, publishers, mostly, about the whole um, Epic Store exclusive things. Epic pays them to have it be exclusive. It releases on the Epic Store, big launch, large audience, all the people over there buy the game. A year later, it becomes available on Steam. It's basically a second launch for the game, and they're going to get a whole lot more money. Yeah, our goal has always been like this whole controversy thing. The publishers well. are just making bank on it. Um, we know that probably about half our audience plays the game drunk, uh, and we love that. Um, <laughs> at, at least half. Yeah, <laughs> that's an important commit metric. toaster <laughs> bath. And the game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over-the-top voiceovers and the role-playing opportunities. I mean, the game is genuinely hilarious. As an example, you can feed a man with a chicken while quoting Shakespeare. Like, so, like, picking up a chicken as a yeah, weapon, physically that's a mechanic. Him to death with well, a that's death. excellent. Well, I mean, I have to ask, when can people get their hands on Chivalry 2? So Chivalry 2 is coming out 
uh, early 2020, and it's coming uh, first to the Epic Games Store. Oh, look forward to checking it out in early 2020. Gentlemen, John Gibson and Steve Piggott with Chivalry 2. Thank you so much. We are just getting started here at the PC Gaming Show. Let's take a look at what's coming up next. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Oh, really? Am I? I didn't know. It Come says that, like, all over the place, but... Build a world for wildlife in Planet Zoo. Is that game? From the creators oh, yeah, I was of Darksiders, game. Remnant from the Ashes, Baldur's Gate 3, and more trailers, interviews, and gameplay footage. I think um, the majority are going to be Epic Store exclusives. Um, however, really, the all it means is it's delayed for a year. game is very uh, obvious social commentary. <laughs> All right, guys, drop the school shooting topic in the chat. <laughs> or at least just like Oh, for Mosaic, a dark and atmospheric adventure game coming later this year from developer Killbite and publisher Raw Fury. So how are you guys 2K doing got so far? 4.6 million for Borderlands 3 exclusive deal. All 10 cents money. The There's a lot of money in China, I tell you. China can fund this stuff for ages. <laughs> However, I'm pretty sure, once again, Tencent only owns like a minority stake, which is large enough to be noted but it's not enough to control the company. However, I still wouldn't necessarily trust Tencent, but hey, once you're a public company, China has the option to buy you out. When the night falls, there's only you and me. Oh yeah, I saw that. How the guys should nerf the Seahawk. <laughs> like, oh, no, no more AP rockets. Although the AP rockets, they're only really good for killing uh, ground targets in air battles. Hey, Noodle Bandit. This game looks weird. Is it like uh, Ghostbusters, the game? Oh, is this like a prop hunt, the game? In VR or something? You have an inbred sister? I've got a big surprise for you. Kind of a serious trailer for such a meme game. Joining me on the stage to talk about Midnight Ghost Hunt is the dynamic one-man team. Creative director, programmer, designer, it's Sam Malone! Thank you for having me. <laughs> Sam. Please tell us what is going on in that. What is Midnight Ghost Hunt all about? So Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting hide and seek game. Uh, you can play as either as ghosts or ghost hunters, like a 4v4 format. I see. Uh, the ghosts can hide inside average everyday objects around the haunted house. Uh, the so this is prop hunt. Like this is the prop hunt game uh, from uh, the inside. They're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Wait, wait, uh, Gary's mod or something? It's not about hiding as a lamp. 
to try to assault and take out a hunter. It's actually, <laughs> you would do that so that way you can keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly, so the main objective of the ghosts is to try to stay hidden as long as they can until the time runs out, until the clock strikes midnight. Midnight being kind of the uh, hour ah, of the yeah. ghosts, basically. Um, they can fight back if they like, but in general, uh, you know, they want to try to hide. But if there's a hunter kind of off by himself, he can quickly I'm really hoping that the these tweets that are floating by, and like some sarcastic asleep. person well, is will find a, a good way to take shots at Epic uh, subvertly. <laughs> so the hunters, it kind of can be uh, divided into two different segments. Uh, the first part of the game is kind of almost like a detective game because they're sort of trying to figure out where the ghosts are hiding because it's not really uh, you know, obvious at first glance. Does anyone so speak German in chat? Like I don't tracker, think so. Like a radar like you saw to try to narrow down. Actually, I don't know if there's a way you can check everyone in the chat. Basically. As soon as the first ghost is found, yeah. though, it starts getting a bit more chaotic. Uh, people, there's ragdolls flying everywhere, and they have that cannon to really try to smash the ghosts into pieces. So those are kind of the two aspects of the ghosts. I see. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for Midnight Ghost Hunt. I understand it's based on a Gary's Mod mod called Prop Hunt. Right. So uh, that's definitely a big inspiration, but the big twist for us is that the props fight back. You saw the furniture, they hurled themselves yeah. at you. Oh, it says Prop Hunt, but you, you can kill so the, kind of the hunters. Like action hide and seek sort of mashup. Uh, you have a reason to be a little bit afraid of. Uh, what well, was with that transition? Was it necessary? So the dynamic of getting out. And I want to ask about when the clock strikes midnight. We saw the very spooky red color pop up. We didn't see what happens then. What's going on then? So, midnight, if even uh, one ghost survives four minutes into the match, then, uh, you I understand German, but can't speak it. That must be frustrating. All the lights will actually flicker out. It'll get really dark and scary, and all of the ghosts that were destroyed actually return as vengeful spirits. Uh, they're a lot more powerful than before, and they glow a very brilliant red. So at this point, uh, the tables have turned. The hunters are now the hunted, and they just need to try to work together to uh, stay alive longer. I have not seen a ghost. Oh, really? Which is another four minutes or so. I have also really not seen a ghost. When it gets to I don't are think I like, remember like seeing any ghosts. Like yeah, you, because the ghosts are so overpowered at midnight. Right. The hunters are doing whatever they can to try to prevent midnight from even occurring by destroying all right, of the right. ghosts and clearing the house, basically. Well, awesome. When can people get the chance to try out Midnight Ghost Hunt? So we'll be running an alpha event later in the summer. Uh, you can sign up at midnightghosthunt.com. I'd also like to give a shout out to What this Discord, game needs uh, is like really stupid uh, uh, ghost hunting TV we'll show cliches. On our Discord as well as on our main website. Well, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Malone from Vaulted Sky Games. For our next title, we got Frankie up in the balcony, and if I understand correctly, Frankie, this is a sequel. You do understand correctly, Sean, yes. It's a big sequel to a small indie game. Unexplored 2 is a procedural adventure, a roguelike that challenges you to fight, to be clever, and to solve its mysteries. Explore a beautiful world, engage with its creatures, and befriend its people. Search for magic lakes and ancient statues until you die. No, I won't speak in German. <laughs> this is Unexplored 2. What's this? Interesting. It's like a artsy dungeon explorer game. <laughs> like, artsy games are fine, but I always find them really like. Like, after you beat them, they're, they get boring. Oh, this one looks pretty, uh, more than just the usual artsy game. Uh, you gotta wait till play it first. One of the 
biggest bang for your buck that you can get when building a new rig is investing in a new monitor. And here to talk about a groundbreaking new display is Samsung's Dean Del Cero. Welcome, Dean. What you got for us? <laughs> I think this is the first for uh, this year. Let's take a look. Not working microphone. <laughs> Put that on the, uh, the, the marker right there. Yes, we all know 240 hertz is better than not 240 hertz. Truly immersive. Oh, G Sync, oh my god! You guys cool? Alright, see ya, boy. I don't really care for these curved monitors. I guess they're neat, but... Eh. I like my ones flat. Dean, we've seen the video. And I gotta start asking. Talk to me about some of those juicy features and specs. So it's a 240 hertz curved gaming panel. We believe it's a world first. So you have lag-free and terrible performance. You believe? Or do you know? Um, and we think that the, the curved, yeah. it's 1500R radius, is going to be a very immersive experience you wouldn't get from a traditional flat panel. And I wanted to ask a little bit about some of the color specs. Sure, it's a 3000 to 1 contrast ratio. So you get those deeper blacks. People right still using white, right? 60 hertz monitor, and now there's 240. I'm still using 60 hertz monitor. <laughs> it's an old one I got. I need to um, upgrade it. Well, since this is the PC gaming show, and we're showing off a huge variety of games. However, there's a billion other things I need to upgrade first. 240 hertz refresh rate and the G-Sync to work well with. Sure, so we think oh my god, my keyboard is some stock Logitech keyboard I got for 20 bucks. First -person shooters are really gonna benefit. I don't know what you said there, man. I got, it got censored by Google. I had to uncensor it. What type of cost are we talking? I have a lizard and his name is Noodle. So that Noodle Bandit guy who steals my Noodle Lizard. <laughs> Because when you said 400, I mean, that's the 27 inches. Right. The on the, wow. Yeah, so our gaming line will be expanded to eight models, ranging from 24 all the way up to a 49 inch dual QHD. Uh, check out samsung.com slash gaming 240 or see us in the back of the room. Unfortunately, I don't have yeah. another arm and leg to sell there. for a monitor. They're there for it. It's, it's not 4K. It's not 4K. Not for that price point. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to let you know that we have all sorts of great Oof. presentations and games coming up. Let's look at what's coming up in the PC Gaming Show. Stay tuned for more announcements, trailers, and never-before-seen footage, including Gearbox answers burning questions about Borderlands 3, the next game from Clay Entertainment. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole in Valfaris, and more. I hope Barrowlands 3 isn't full of like and now the PC gaming show edgy teenage jokes. Funcom. Hello everyone, thanks for the warm applause. Um, it's very exciting for all of us at Funcom to Got be here at the or... PC gaming show for the very first time ever. And naturally, com. we would like to <laughs> show some of the cool stuff that we've been working on. So, without further ado, here are some of the games coming for 2019. Something strange is going on all across the zone. I don't fear nothing until now. Is this a furry game? This is very weird. A lot's happened since you've been traveling, Khan. We could use your skills. Stalkers got each other's backs, right? What happens to you happens to me. Oh, that changed rapidly. <laughs> oh, it's kind of nice to see more RTS around, and not just uh, remakes of uh, whatever that one was from the Microsoft one. Oh, 
I'm loving those giant spiders though. <laughs> That'd be fun an RTS unit. Moons of Madness. It's like one of those run from the enemy games. Who would have thought? My son. Off to fly among the stars. Now you're all speaking German. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, founder and director of Mighty Kingdom, Philip Mays. So yeah, at Funcom we've been doing our own games for over 26 years now. But recently we had the great pleasure to be working with some other very talented developers and help them publish their games. And on that note, I'd like to introduce Phil Mays. Uh, he is founder of Mighty Kingdom, a studio out of Australia, who has been working with us on something a little different. Thank you, Natasha. So on April 1st this year, we put out a little trailer for something called Conan Chop Chop. And uh, considering the date, it was perhaps no surprise that people decided that that was uh, April Fool's joke. So uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check this out. It's kind of funny, there's been a lot of Conan games lately. Um, that was like a movie in the 80s. I think it was based off a comic book. 80s or 90s, I don't remember. Quite possibly the best Conan game yet. So it's like Castle Crashers, but with Conan characters. Castle Crashers was fun. What is Conan genre? Conan, Jean Conan isn't a genre. Conan is a, uh, it's a character. It's a series. It's like a uh, barbarians and stuff. So there you have it, uh, Conan Chop Chop. It's a roguelike action adventure game. Uh, it's very real and it's coming to PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year, it's 2019. We also have a playable version here at E3 at our demo room. So if you want to give stick figure Conan a try, then please don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know German. <laughs> this is a nomadic survival game set in a post. <laughs> and there's no auto Google Translate on the chat. Stop rotating. The last humans need to outrun the blazing sun in massive open world environments. Good times. But cheer up, sunshine. This is one of the most original looking multiplayers we've seen with interesting ideas underneath. A player driven economy and some truly incredible death machines. Coming to early access on Steam on July 15th, let's take a trip to the last oasis. My tribe built wooden legs to lift us over the burning sands. We must move forward or die beneath the sun. This game looking weird. Oh, this is that one weird game that they showed in the intro thingy. Now this is going to be one of them, like, run around naked, hit people with stones games. Like, a, what was it called? Rust? Yeah. This is going to be like a Rust clone. So, uh, whatever you said there got censored too. <laughs> Oh, 
I love how there's absolutely no, like, uh, view distance. <laughs> I had the feeling that he did call me some sort of insult, but uh, that's his free will. This game is certain look. This is looking really weird. Penguins? Is there like a penguin species? <laughs> the name of the game is Age of Wonders Planetfall, a 4X strategy game, and joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director, Leonard Sass, and principal gameplay developer, Tom Bird. Welcome, guys. Hi. Good to be here. Good to be here. So, Leonard, just give us the gist of what Age of Wonders Planetfall is all about. Sure. Age of Wonders is a turn-based strategy game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, you choose or, or create your own faction. Yeah. They include uh, the Vanguard Expeditionary Forces, who are in cryo sleep when everything went to hell. Um, there's scavenging cyborgs, or the Amazon bioengineers who ride dinosaurs into battle. <laughs> <laughs> you reading these tweets at the you bottom? They're really because strange. There's a broad range of 4X strategy games. To give a sense of what the gameplay is, I just want to start from the beginning. I feel of the like what it's bacon cheeseburger with well, the cheese uh, on the spaceship. side the F, the space the exploration the the airplane the F, takes place. And survive first person shooter. Colony, where your what? Entire empire begins, your sort of attempt to take over the world. Everything else is in German. Most of them. So maybe you'll find a genetic lab which is still full of horrible mutant creatures, an entertainment complex overrun by horrible robot monsters, a temple yeah, with holes in the sky it. and horrible demons who get you. Uh, <laughs> and I did see in the trailer dinosaurs with lasers, correct? Dinosaurs yeah, yeah. with lasers. Perfect. Well, cats I mean, with lasers. No, sorry. No cats with lasers. I'm so sorry to disappoint all of you. No <laughs> cats with lasers. You have to settle with dinosaurs. <laughs> You know, I saw the expansive tech tree show up in the game briefly, and I know that growing resource and tech is a huge part of yeah. strategy games. How does that function? Right, so part of these tech trees come from your origin race. They sort of represent the past of where you came from. They include new units, uh, new modules for your units, like jetpacks for your troopers, orbital laser cannons you can launch from space, um, social doctrines, it's not all about war. Um, yeah. And then uh, the second part of your tech tree comes from your secret technology, and that's all about the future of your faction. Uh, so you can create like a combination between man and machine or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, others include doomsday technologies that allows you to infect the entire population with alien brain-eating parasites or win the game by uh, splitting space time. I love how many details you're giving me of the you horror. Can't, away you can't at me and then start speaking German. <laughs> the toxic well, Germans. I ask about some of the combat that we saw. Because in a lot of strategy games, the combat can be very good. Uh, I, I think what they're doing here is pretty uh, tame for what Germany has been known to. It's quite rich. Right, so when combat starts, you'll like, see... Like, if you want to see some real toxic like Germans, you got to go look back in history. Like when you combat, go into combat, you will zoom all the way in, and you will be inside the lab. You'll see all the pipes and all of the goops flowing around. All of your units, which you've been putting together and built, are now deployed in turn-based combat. You can move them into cover, use their abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space dwarves in little yeah. metal suits that dig holes in the ground, like shoot from the, from the holes. <laughs> Maybe you've toxic. chosen the Kirko, sort of the horrible alien yeah. bug monsters. They run forwards and slash people and puke acid on them, that kind of thing. I mean, how, how long do some of these battles wind up lasting? It depends. A short battle can be maybe uh, two or three minutes, but at the end of the game, you know, you've got a massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got orbital cannons blasting wow. holes in the world. And that can maybe take 30 minutes. Well, talk to us about when we can play the game. Okay. The game is due uh, this August 6th. It's going to be available on PC, multiple platforms, consoles, uh, and it's available for pre-order now. 
Well, Forex lovely. game on hey, consoles. Oh, God. URL. What uh, a nightmare. It's AOW-planetfall.com. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's less than two months away. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining Thank me up much. on Thank stage. You. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Thank you for sharing the horrors of the future. <laughs> and for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you, what year is it? Why? The year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe lies in ruins torn apart by the satanic Plan Z. A brave band of heroes cast the Fuhrer into hell, but little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Achtung! This is You know, people the ask if we had a dream, the next shooter if we had, the a, Lakers, had the German the dream, we would have... <laughs> we had a dream once, but you guys didn't like it. <laughs> Rated M for mature. That's good to know. Not actual game footage. Yeah, I doubted that. Oh, World War II zombies. Like, zombie games in the modern day, I've gotten really bored of. Because if you think of them logically, the likelihood of a situation like that falling through is just it's so unlikely because of our, our ability to communicate with one another. Good thing there's a black female in Europe in 1946. There was a lot of those there. <laughs> um, but... If you were to take, uh, just move it back a few years to... Uh, like even the 60s, the amount of... Um, like the amount of communication we'd have would be uh, much less and thus the abilities for zombies to kill everyone would be much greater. But yeah, having like a World War II zombie game, that could be actually be like logical still. But I still think what they should do is drop all the gun stuff and have a medieval zombie game where you fight zombies and no magic or anything like that. Just zombies and knights and castles and stuff. Is she like Asian or something? <laughs> Come on, let's go. A little far from home. It doesn't really matter. It's a zombie game. They can make all their garbage they want. Is that like two MG42s? Call me fat. I I could I, I understand the fatty person. I'm a uh, not in the perfect shape. Not as fat as I want. Uh, not as uh, thin as I want to be. Is that not zombie Hitler? <laughs> oh, zombie army four. Oh, it's a uh, sniper elite games. Those games are pretty fun. Later, Next thing you see is an Indian zombie zone. hunter. Is <laughs> Indian zombie Hitler? A love letter to classic JRPGs. What's next for Warframe? A surreal noir adventure set before, during, and after the Big Bang. Baldur's Gate 3 and more. Some cool uh, visuals. Ending assault without reason. We are victims to a hatred that we do not understand. This very interesting looking game. Consume our world and the countless worlds beyond. Unless you rise. Glory and blood. You seek the source of death itself. A lot of F there. Yourselves. They are here. It's 
This game looks interesting, but I hope that the combat's good. <laughs> Joining me on the stage to talk about Remnant from the Ashes in that trailer, we got the chance to see so much. I do not understand most of the things you say welcome. that are CEO in German. Gunfire Games, <laughs> David Adams. How am I doing? I'm doing so all right. I want to ask right away for those who are unfamiliar with Remnant from the Ashes. What kind Just of got a new. MG42 so and M16 German set on an apocalyptic Earth World War One helmet with a blood stain and, and I mean, now hanging it. Trailer, we got the chance to see a back with watching. Oh, like, you like you legit got one of those? So That's pretty player, cool. I hear the World War One helmets are pretty rare. To save the world and, uh, the we German really ones. We wanted to have a bunch of different cool locales that you go to just to experience a bunch of different stuff. And you start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we've you know, talked about before is that replayability is a huge focus of the game, that you could play through it 10 times and still be seeing new bosses, new monsters, new locations. How exactly does that work? Yeah, I think one of the coolest features of the game is the dynamic generation system. <laughs> once again, so I, I don't know German guys. Quests, I don't know anything. I, uh, you built those all by hand. I could right? yeah, make out a few words because it's similar to English. Pieces and stitches it together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I talked to a giant tree and fought a dragon boss, and I'd be like, I met a guy in a helicopter, an old guy in a helicopter, and killed a tree ant, and we'd have completely different experiences. One of the, and something like, I've always wanted was a, um, going through and eventually one of the uh, swords the that the uh, Japanese yeah, you can play the game over uh, over soldiers again, would get. I think, I don't know what world, class would you have to get, but just any of them that, from World War II. Like, those are some pretty cool looking swords, because they're um, not just katanas or whatever, they're more modernized. How does it function alongside this ever-shifting gameplay experience? Yeah, the loot in the game is all legendary items, and it's tied into the uh, dynamic. I also want a, um, you fight a boss, broom handle. NPC, or get a cool, unique side I love this gun. It looks so cool. It coincides with a cool, unique item. It might be a boss weapon oh, or a magical item or armor. So if you play the game and you get all completely different events, you'll have different equipment than I have. And in the trailer, I also saw that there were three people walking through these. You mentioned the co-op experience. How does co-op function in the world? So the game is full co-op from beginning to the end. You can jump in at any point. You have German. I don't care. You can speak German all you want. Just don't expect me to reply to it. <laughs> so, awesome. There's a huge advantage to bringing your friends to come in there and help you take down bosses or fight off different events or just generally progress through the world. Yeah, well, I mean, as a big fan of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. You have a German stick grenade. Be careful with that. Date? Where can people go for more information? So Remnant's coming out uh, August 20th on oh, wow. PC. I have, um, Xbox and I think there's World War II, a U.S. helmet. Get in early and start the Could game be Vietnam, though. Well, awesome. Ladies and okay, they use the same David helmets. From Gunfire Are games. you just spamming <laughs> random letters? About and as we mentioned earlier, keep those questions coming. I will be asking on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3 everything you want to know. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, just use hashtag PC Gaming Show. And until that time, let's talk about our next title. This one. Hey, was you can speak whatever language you want, ago. man. You can start PC speaking Gaming Portuguese Show or. Uh... It's a game from Clay Entertainment called Griftlands. It's changed quite a bit in the last two years. It's now a deck building roguelike where you don't just fight, but you also negotiate your way through a I got a World War II. Wait, wait, wait. World. It's going to be available on the Epic Game Store in one short month oh, on yeah, July sure. 11th. I also got a free SS bag dated 1944 one. with it. But I dad's real. Oh. Well, maybe it looks cool at least. Your helmet, does it have a stem or a folded edge come together the rear? After World War II, they went from the rear to the front. I don't remember. I'd have to go grab it. It's in a box on my shelf. So this is another furry game. <laughs> A 
I used to own three post-war M1 helmets. All had front stem showing. It isn't World War II helmet. I also would love to get one of World War II German helmets. Those ones were really cool. Planet Zoo is the latest game from the makers of the brilliant Planet Coaster. Please welcome Piers Jackson and Lisa Bowen. I also don't know Chinese, so I have no idea what you're saying. Oh, you're uh, trying to get um, doing the TM and Square thing. I doubt that actually works. Zoo is a new management sim game from us. Um, it involves you building and looking after a modern zoo, and you get to look after the most authentic animals we believe you've ever seen in a video game. Each of our animals are unique. They have their own needs, their own desires, and their own behaviors. They interact with each other and react with the world you build around them. Uh, so can I, like, put a tiger in the giraffe pit really and excited. We'll show everyone watch the carnage gameplay video. of the giraffes just destroying a tiger? Fantastic. Let's buy the world's largest family pass and take a look inside. Got a World War II German police helmet. And I'd, I personally would uh, hold on to that, but I love like history stuff. A PPSH. That is a prequel. Cool. Some Ting Wong. <laughs> oh god, not that joke. Can I like? Oh, that, that's really what I wanted to see. A hippo. Like, if they want this game to sell, what they have to do is let you put people in the uh, in the pins with the, with the animals. Another Madagascar game? <laughs> no, it's a zoo game. shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing, yes. adorable baby elements. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to play it. But before we saw the trailer, Piers mentioned this is a modern zoo, but what exactly does that mean? So nowadays when you go to the zoo, you're not just going to see all the lovely, pretty animals. You go there, you <laughs> want to be, you know, learning about conservation. Uh, you want to learn about the research that they're doing. You want to be educated. And these are all things that you're going to be able to do in Planet Zoo. And these ideas of the modern zoo is really what we take to heart, and we're going to be promoting you know, the health and the welfare of your animals as the most important thing to do. And Piers, when can we see more gameplay, and when are we going to be able to get our hands on it ourselves? So we're um, obviously demoing the game all, um, all this week at E3, but most people aren't going to be able to see that, so we've recorded our presentation. Lisa's done a fantastic mm -hmm. voiceover for it, and we'll be releasing that onto Frontier's YouTube channel. That goes live this Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, fantastic. I cannot wait to watch. Thank you so much for joining us. Piers and Lisa, everyone. I never thought if <laughs> pooping would be a selling point Next for up, a game. We have a very special guest all the way This is the first time for everything. Oh, Shenmue. That is right. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the stage is a legend of Japanese game development. It's Mr. Yu Suzuki. Do you think people will uh, telling oh, me to donate in addition to being the, brain the helmet the following with bloodstain to a museum due to tragedy story? Should I? Virtual um, and virtual fighter, Yu also created the Shenmue series. I know. He's here to talk about Shenmue series. Should say it belongs right to the museum, got to protect Yusana. history, but it's not like you're going to melt it down and turn it into a bunch of spoons or anything. Like, it is yours, so you decide what happens to it, really. Thank you to the older fan supporting Just take some pictures and put them on the internet. Same years. thing, really. Thank you very much. The wait is nearly over. That's right. Let's take a world exclusive look at Shenmue 3. Unless it's like, I don't know, Hitler's helmet when he got shot in the trench. I'd, I'd sell that back, man. <laughs> 
Honestly, I don't think your Kung Fu is strong enough. Uh, Grandmaster, I... This game was announced, like, years ago. As a Kickstarter. A long time oh. ago. On the Sony Martial presentation. Bad, I guess they wanted to show it off in the Sony presentation, but they're not, Sony's not having one this year. Secret, away from prying eyes and became stronger. One even practiced atop this very boat. Nam Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. What did you say to me? Stop it. They threaten and extort money from shop owners, get drunk by noon, and cause trouble. Everyone in town is afraid of them. They are heartless. Oh. Lovely. Hey, wait right there. I don't know if there's a problem on my end or not, but... Japanese guy who got in our way. You've got some guts to barge in here on your own. Oh my god, is Shenmu gonna be an epic or store exclusive? I know so many people have oh been waiting god. for Shenmu 3. I would like to once again thank you so much. Thank what is you your in game name? I will tag your Cheers, worth in your live. Thank you. And post I made about a helmet. My in game name is 2 and now 900, but 2 is spelled out and there's no spaces. Heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Let's take a look at an upcoming collaboration between Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. I like this uh, pixel art. Within you it is who we are. In dead or in living, it's nay and it's far. In you, yeah, I'm uh... beasts of the land. It flows through the forest and breathes the sand. Lightning and thunder in battle and waste. A land torn asunder by night and by day. The Empress returned. Are you like pirates now? Can I join? Join what? Oh, what's brewing in the German ranks? Yeah, you can speak German all you want, man. <laughs> Start conspiring World War Three. But what is it? Like, it they didn't explain us. Maybe the they'll talk about the it. The game is Songs of Conquest, and here to join me in talking about it is the lead designer from Lava Potion, Carl Toffelt. Hey, yeah. Carl. Hi, hey, thanks. I mean, let's just start off for anyone who maybe hasn't played the Heroes of Might and Magic series. What is Song of Conquest all about? Um, it's all about, um, well, you kind of start off with in the town that you just saw in the end of right. the trailer. And uh, from there, you recruit your wielders, is what we call our commanders. And uh, yeah. you recruit an army, and then you kind of send off your wielders on an adventure. And they go exploring yeah. the world, they pick up resources to flag mines, and with those resources, you upgrade your town so you can get more stuff, and that's kind of what you do. Your blood adventure pressure is already going. Yeah, and you know, I know from that part of the core <laughs> loop is obviously what? get the resources to build up the township, but yeah. for what reason? Armies, man. Talk to me about those juicy battles. I've tagged yeah, you so in the comments the on the post. Like the All right. Game is turn based. Uh -huh. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like horned wands and face spirits. Great. Are you yeah, playing the Bring so Back well, Cyber yeah, Hitler? And, and well, you know, as, as someone who just loves the Heroes of Might and Magic series, Ste I know that you Steam have translated Stalin. a lot of gameplay elements <laughs> yeah. into Songs of Combat. I like but Steam Stalin. I've never heard that one before. elements that you're bringing in. Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, one of them is our magic system. We call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. um, in, our, in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within them, sort of like the soul. So your troops, they have an essence. And to do magic, you need to bring the troops with the right essence, with your wielders. Oh, skills. I see. So if you want to uh, like make your troops go faster, you need to bring 
a troop that has that essence, like cavalry. And maybe to ask a basic question, what if my opponent kills that cavalry? Then you can't do the magic. So, oh, I see, okay. Yeah. yeah, so if you're fighting someone, you kind of have to like weigh the pros and cons of what to kill off. Like, do you want to destroy their magic or their powerful troops? Where can people go to get more information? And as always, when's it coming? Um, late 2020. Oh, it's quite a ways off. It's quite a ways off, but you can go to songsofconquest.com and sign up for our alpha, and then oh, you can play earlier. Well, as you know, I'm really looking forward to playing it, Carl. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I, yeah, I've heard of Cyber Hitler before. Everyone's heard of Cyber Hitler. Now, our next title is an update to a popular co-op game. Let's see what's in store for Vermin Tide 2. Vermin Tide 2 uh, DLC. Hmm. Play as the rats now. That's hilarious. So now it's even more like, uh, which I'm gonna call it, Left for Dead. You're gonna go play some top two worth under. All right, see you, bro. New PvP mode coming to Vermintide 2, which turns the Warhammer Fantasy cooperative game into something even more brutally competitive. It looks deliciously vile, and surely dismembering Scraven is so much more satisfying. The type than four will be German ranks too. Type four what? Your favorite behind their computer screen. You can sign up now for the Vermintide 2 versus beta at vermintide2.com forward slash version versus. In Per Aphra, you're an artificial consciousness orbiting Mars, whose ultimate purpose is to terraform the planet, starting from a single drone in your landing site and turning the planet into a flourishing second home for humanity. Courtesy of developer Talon Industries and publisher Raw Fury, here's a first ever look at Per Aphra. As we all know, reaching the red planet was not humanity's greatest achievement. Transferring the complexity of the human mind to machines was. That's a bit of a different subject so there. <laughs> where we failed. So they can build As an interesting home. woman, she's scaring me. Dusty rock. Today, German conspiracy stuff. Mars and begins their mission. Amy. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with, with top tier. Of course, I'm with you, Houston. This is like a base builder on Mars. You gotta move resources around. Interesting, I guess. In the Assassin's Creed universe, our next guest sent players back in time to rewrite history. But for his debut project with indie studio Panache Digital Games, he's going to take us back 10 million years to where humanity began. Here to tell us all about this is Far Cry Primal again. Co-founder Patrice Desolet. Welcome, Patrice. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. It's I've been waiting 10 years. Yes. To come back on the big stage at E3 showing off a game. Well, it's fantastic to have you back. I just want to ask, what inspired you to tell the story of human evolution? Well, when I started Panache, I needed a game. I'm waiting uh, for her to open world game yank her clothes off and reveal a lot of dominatrix outfit and whip. And <laughs> first. Well, your mind is going places. I'm the historical guy. I'm the historical dude. So I need an historical period. So I said, oh, let's go back at the very beginning. It'll be easier to do because I won't have to build a city. I won't have to build technology. And I was a bit naive because we built Africa 10 million years ago. That's but, and that's not easy to build. So it's a it monkey sound game? Easy. I mean, how have you turned those scenes into gameplay? Well, y you play our last common ancestor, 
right, of all the big apes. And then you have to explore your, your environment. And eventually, you expand your territory, you expand your clan, because you're not playing that one badass character. You play a group of badass character. And eventually, you evolve into different species, up until Lucy the Australopithecus, roughly two million years ago. I imagine our ancestors had uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. There's going to be a lot more dangers in this world, so tell me a bit more about those. Well, it's all about from a prey this is to a very a weird predator. game. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill so you is it like, um, and devour you. What's it called? And, and, and basically, at the end, a spore, it's much but you, more we are the predator. like Everybody's you don't make predator. some sort of phallic-shaped monster. You play as a monkey. So, Patrice, ultimately, what is the key to evolving your clan successfully? I'm a plumber. Curiosity. Mind leaves places. You need to explore because, you know, I made game about characters and you needed to follow the story I wrote for you. This time, you're basically right. I hate the to story. be like there's, there's no apes. story per se inside. It's not about there's going itchy fleas and givers. It's ticks not about the deal. I, I, that's probably the worst part about being a monkey. It's about you, hey, homo sapiens. Can you survive like our ancestors did? And that's the question I'm asking the players. It'll be for you to answer that question August 27th well, I was on PC you, first. I was going to ask you when we can see it, and you answer my question first. Thank you yeah, so much, getting Patrice. Good at this. As Patrice says, Ancestors will be released August 27th, and you can Watching the closet <laughs> demon girl. <laughs> Oh yeah, epic game. The Epic Game Store exclusivities miss me entirely is because I don't really care too much about new games. The only ones I had cared about were Bethesda games, and unfortunately those have been sucking lately. Or at least been uh, a continuous downgrade. Oh, this looks great. Mm -hmm. Is this chess? I oh, know, it's like some... It's like mobile game garbage. So, uh... So it's whatever new game being put on Epic Scores, because by the time I bother to go buy it for like five bucks on sale, it's gonna be on Steam. Please welcome to the stage Loring Lee, founder and CEO of Dragon Nest. Indeed, Auto Chess has turned Ooh. out to be a sensation, with hundreds of thousands, millions of players getting a taste of it, and here to talk about it's coming to PC is yeah. Loring Lee. Take it away, Loring. Yeah. Hello, everyone. One thing good, I'm actually, Loring about Lee. the Epic Store, though, is that they're bringing some yeah. pl PlayStation Hello. exclusives Hello. to, uh, I'm the CEO and the to PC. Of Unfortunately, Dragon they're kind of lame ones. Please learn German to talk with us. That's <laughs> so a bit of a, here. Bit of a tall uh, glass our you're asking there. The to all of you, this is really an exciting moment for us. And so Twitter says, 
this is a real engaging game of auto chess. Dragonstone now is working with the creator of, okay, of auto chess, Jodo Studio. Uh, we are working together to bring auto chess to our world, both on PC and uh, mobile, so that everyone from anywhere with any device can enjoy the same fun of auto chess. Now we are building the other chess may, must gotta be a, some sort of amazing game. The, uh, game engine or Unreal Engine 4. As everyone knows, Unreal Engine is one of the best game engines of the world. Why you uh, with the I speak a games and uh, the English the good. I don't speak the Unreal. English good. I'm actually but really bad at English. English. And, <laughs> and uh, today I'm very glad to announce. The PC version of Auto Chess will be coming to the Epic Game Store. I look forward. Oh God! Now you're speaking my German. <laughs> I look forward to all of you playing Auto Chess on PC later this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, Auto Chess. If you have not played it, you must check it out. It is so fun. Our next title with Frankie up above. I understand it's an inspired indie game. We'll find oh, out. Sure. Talking One to of the, the Germans. We love about PC gaming is the way that game creators from all over the world can Hey, no W words in this world. chat. Chris Charles is this a This is a Christian chat. A gorgeous indie love letter to classic JRPGs developed by a team in Colombia. Chris Tales' spin on the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. So you'll see the future change based on your decisions in real time. Here's the world exclusive reveal of Chris Tales. So this is a an animu game. If you essentially. Saw what was what is or an animu inspired game at least if you knew how it ends would you change it could you make the hard decisions and would you be strong enough to fight it's like very 80s anime <laughs> my <laughs> If you learn from the past and act in the present, you can rewrite the future. Is the old whole game this heart art style? It's pretty nice. Although with any RPG, it really comes down to hopefully the story's not trash. Like that's that's what matters. As I do, I am offended by as I said, Christian chat. Weapon. It's how you use it. Well, that's your problem, man. You shouldn't have killed Jesus. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, it's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valfaris. A brutal, heavy metal infused 2G action platformer inspired by true old school classics like Concha and Torrican. Assuming the role of fearless Warrafarium. Players must blast and slash their way through the doomed citadel of Balfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole from publisher Big Sugar. This is Balfaris. That's a very massive spaceship thing. This is like a Metroidvania, but it's like hardcore metal. Give me back my super sucker. <laughs>
Just incredible action in the Valforis trailer. I'm very excited for our next guest. In case you have not been in downtown LA, E3 is covered with Borderlands 3 art. Old it's Doom amazing, graphics. it's beautiful. And joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage, creative director <laughs> of Borderlands 3. Beautiful's a new one, thanks. Yeah, there you go, Paul. No, it's not all the Borderlands 3 stuff. I mean, there's been so much hype around Borderlands 3. What's the stuff you're really excited to be sharing this year at E3? Oh man, so you know, we've talked about our vault hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's and she is our uh, gunner vault hunter, so yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about, you know, the different things. Uh, this time they're gonna talk about D.Va. I mean, uh, a lot of stuff to talk about. not well, D.Va. I want to start right off with Moe's. Tell us everything you can about her. Okay, yes, I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. You know, we have multiple action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a railgun or a flamethrower, you know, if you want to barbecue your enemy, something like that. Oh, so, nice. You know, uh, yeah, Moe's is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, we've been excited to be collating a whole bunch of community questions. We're going to break them into two categories. First, there's a whole bunch of repeat questions that I want to make sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is about loot, because you mentioned having a billion guns earlier, but what can you tell us about some of the other gear, the other progression systems right. in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades, like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past, we've had grenades. If they've had yeah. like one thing, they can bounce, they can stick to different things, you know? Yeah. This time we're combining uh. like all of those <laughs> things. So for instance, the other day I was playing and I threw a grenade and that grenade had a bounce. He all speak in German. The explosion would come out and the grenade would fire guns as in it was Deutsch, going. Through, or whatever right? it's called. So we have like a ton of different grenades <laughs> that, that are in there. Oh, it's uh, freezing up again. Did it crash? Shield where if you duck, nope. that shield will extend out in front of you, you know? So oh, just, just like, tons of different things that we have with our characters, class mods, class mods are unique. Oh, it looks and very much the same as the other Borderlands, which people typically criticize, but you know, if a game is doing what it's actually good at doing, I don't see that as a bad thing. Because I think of Fallout 76 is exactly what you don't want to do. Uh, Bethesda decided to totally do a whole new thing with uh, fallout and they completely so screwed it up like so instead of like doing minor changes over time they just did so one instance, large you change you can slide and every time you slide and sometimes you don't even need to do minor changes sometimes you just need to add more stuff i don't know why it's doing this maybe my internet is dying uh, second category of questions unrelated to second category of questions unrelated to loot well there's going to be a single player campaign what's going to be happening after the campaign what are some of the beyond the single player, maybe end game content that you can talk about. All right, end game content. Okay, well, it's E3, so I, I give a little bit. So we have this Great. thing we call the Guardian system. So for those people who play Borderlands before, I'm you might need a shotgun cart for Badass all of the... You can get, you know, it's oh. basically kind of an infinite progression system that added to your stats. Yeah. We double down on that. We have what we call Borderlands tra tries Guardian to stay true to its art style. style. You know, I gotta say, I do it like its art style. I've always liked Borderlands cell shaded stuff. And the They've always, they're like, like one of the few games to have done that uh, correctly. That yeah. Gets the benefits of Guardian Ring. Oh, interesting. All right, last category. I'm going to be go a bit. And then we're going to hit some rapid fire questions. I'm going to be How bit one or two speak German. Borderlands one and two. I know those were big aspects. And the what? others are. How do you build upon that? Right, faking. So oh. Fight, you know, like I, I'm an old school Nintendo. Real fan, speakers right? so are not I sure what language the other like, two oh, yeah, are typing. Stuff like that. So Just now, guessing. People, you know, smart people in the audience know <laughs> well, someone's not typing Russian. Instead of vault. Uh, no, right? no so Russian. Like right. Yes. Like huge boss encounters there uh, that are just you know multi-phase boss encounters. We have like a lot of different mini bosses throughout the game. So a lot of different boss encounters throughout the game. Well, now I want to ask some really quick questions that should be yes or no, very brief. First from Castoray. How will you be handling multiplayer? Um, multiplayer. We will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time. So. Awesome. From MHL Animations, can I pet the gun? Great question. I'm not here to judge what you do with your gun, so you know, you, that's a personal question. All right, great. <laughs> Sam Wiseman asks, is Maya's new companion a siren? People are asking the right questions. That's what I will say about that. Oh, you tease. Yeah, sorry. All right, from Ironic Sang. I know Mandarin, says, but it's basically impossible to, to <laughs> type on a QWERTY keyboard. Yes. Nice. All right, I'm just going to blast through a couple more as fast as I possibly can. Right. Uh, what's the level cap at launch? 50. I'm going to use the three stooges method. Will we get to method. see Black? I'm going pig Latin. Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Will there be duels? Yes. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> 
And also maybe. And Perfect. Maybe, yeah. And will you be able to transfer weapons between your characters? Absolutely, right from the start. Perfect. And when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Borderlands.com for more information. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me on stage. John, thank you. And once again, if you have not seen all the setups in downtown for Borderlands 2, oh, they're beautiful. Why not Russian? Our next game, we're going to be Let's revisiting the Let's make the chat completely unreadable. <laughs> Don't, well, you can't just Google translate some language. That's cheating, man. Oh, now, now oh. your girl's in a shark oh, hi. costume. We're live. Sorry. Hello. I was just, uh, yeah, I was actually testing out my outfit for this weekend. I don't know. What do you think, John? I, I think you look really sharp, as always. Very sharp. Well, thank you so much. John Gibson, president of Tripwire, thank you for joining us again on the show. Yeah, I'm very, very to be busy here. man. Yes. Yes. I love now, how these games year, show either we they're F exclusive or don't show any of the platforms there. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid flag. Um, yeah, well, it's pretty advertised that this is sponsored by Epic Game Store. You start as a, a small baby shark pup, and you have to survive in this harsh world and try to eat your way to the Enlisted top of the win. ecosystem. The three words a sea furry. <laughs> Enlisted is probably going to be a Gamescom. And uh, we also have someone we'd like you to meet. Well, let's meet him then. Let's take a look at the new trailer. Appallingly dressed fisherman in the trailer because, quite frankly, not even I would eat him. <laughs> that was Scaly Pete, and Scaly Pete's the villain in this tale. Sc Pete is uh, is a best fisherman in the Gulf, the best shark fisherman, or he'll tell you he's the best shark fisherman, and uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the game and does some really nasty things. So he's if not you a very speak nice German guy. Type one, and two, now, three. Of Man -Eater is told, Your credit card uh, number. <laughs> the lens of a reality show called Shark Hunters versus Man Eaters, and it follows Pete and uh, the player shark on its adventures. I know that'd be awesome. And, if, like you just uh, go around you know, and eat people. It's a really, you know, it's it's a very exciting way uh, way to tell a story. And based on that trailer, to be honest, John, it looks like your main goal as a shark is to just bite everything. Yeah, there is, there is an awful lot of man-eating going on in this game. That is the name of the game. And, uh, but we like to think of the game as a shark-tastic fun action Yeah, so it is like, it's like GTA, eating people in a shark. shark. That's cool. Um, but there's, <laughs> if there, there is more to the game than just eating. So uh, we spend a lot of time making, moving through the water, breaching out, and, so he's uh, like, and adding abilities to... What they need to do is have a... Uh, snack. Um, a so, tornado uh, level where you get a, into a the tornado and become a game. shark tornado. And you mentioned before it's a shark PG. How does that progression system work? So there's three facets to, to the shark PG elements of the game. Uh, there's growth, there's life phases, and there's evolution. Sound like Vort. So no, it's growth, not a degenerate uh, game. <laughs> no. things, nutrients, people, whatever you can find. And that's kind of like your XP in the game. That allows you to level up, your shark will grow a little bit, you'll get more powerful. And then at key phases, uh, we call life phases, You'll, you'll, you'll make a big jump. So let's say you're a, a brooding teenage shark and you're about to become an adult. When you become an adult, oh, you so it's like one of those size, games where you level up as you eat. Power and capability. And you eat and larger then things. As you reach these life phases, you unlock evolutions that can be applied to parts of the shark's body. For example, you could get metallic teeth that allow you to shred boats, or a powerful tail that allows you to jump to incredible heights. Or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks. Just really quickly, John, everyone's wanting to know this question. When's it coming out? 
And we're, oh yeah, I remember that multiplayer shark game. That was a while ago. And trying to make it the most awesome shark RPG ever. Um, we do not ready to announce a date, but we're pretty certain you're going to see it before the next PC gaming show. Well, I hope we do, John. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start biting people. In fact, I'm quite hungry at the moment, so I think actually I'm going to find an audience member because you guys look tasty. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to have a snack. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. You know, one of the absolute best parts about being sponsored by iWin for the PC Gaming Show is that I get to sit for this next segment and talk to you about Terraria. Terraria is one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. And part of the reason why it's maintained Terraria is a pretty fun game. Is the fact that the developers Relogic continue to add content, going from 250 Only items to over Only $3.99. <laughs> Let's take a look at their penultimate expansion coming up, Terraria Journey's End. Pretty uh, lukewarm st changes you got here. Like what they need to add to try is like more biomes and make it so it's a full globe that you can explore, not just like an area between two oceans that you can't cross. Oh, you can play golf though. That's what's real important here. This game it's apparently still well, it is actually still relevant. My younger brother he watches YouTube videos of people playing it. Like, this is one of those games that you didn't realize is still relevant, but people love it. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it wasn't me, it was them. <laughs> the next title that nice we're time. going to be looking at is a game that is the spiritual successor to her story. It's called Telling Lies by Annapurna Interactive, and joining me to talk about it is game director Sam Barlow and actor producer Logan Marshall Green. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. I'm main man. Now, I'm buying it now. Well, I think it's an expansion. Story, Probably not out soon. Should. It's fantastic. I want to note, it is a game where you watch live interactive video in order to uncover what happened with a murder. What? What is it that's going on in Telling Lies? What's the premise? So, uh, Stream like Tiger. Telling Lies is a game in which Dude, you watch oh, wait, that's more German. to piece together a story. The Ghetto Blaster. And this time, we have a woman who has stolen an NSA hard drive which contains secretly recorded intimate and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you. Pretty sure the government would uh, encrypt their hard drive, so you can't just steal one of them and find all the stuff. Telling lies in action. Let's take a look. I guarantee it wouldn't work on a Mac. Upon a time. It's late. I gotta get her in the bath. I don't love you and I don't miss you. Guys, should reveal Sturm <laughs> Tiger as Epic much. Store exclusive. It's late. I gotta get her in the bath. I love you. He's not far wrong about the ghetto blaster part. <laughs> love you. It was a pretty ghetto tank. Although it kind of comes down to that when you're building tanks while being bombed. Girl, I met when I was 18, but I was too young and naive to handle it properly. And I guess I still carry a torch for it, which makes me an incurable romantic. Or what will Gaijin reveal at E3? They won't reveal anything at E3. They don't do E3s that much. Although I would suggest the. Uh, 
go with the celebration a bit. Bob Simple. Oh, Sam, I got some questions for you about what we've just seen. Let, I mean, talk to me about the mechanics. I mean, I saw, you know, the subtitles up, highlighting, and it was loading more video footage. What's going on? So what we do in Telling Lies is we take all of the exploration you would have in a normal video game. Disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sucks for you, man. Directly to the story, to the footage itself. So you're going to be scrubbing around in these. I never have. High, I never have high expectations for Gaijin, anyways. The subtext, listening to names, people, places, and with that information, you're going to use that to find more clips, dig into those, see. and over time, kind of build up this picture of the story. And it's it's truly like an open world video game. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of times with open-world video games, they talk about, you know, the square... Me going to anime expo this year? No. Um, I don't get that kind of money, and it's pretty far away. How many hours of footage is there? So we got, like... Oh, like, I see what you mean. Here, wow, so it's really a literal crazy. ghetto blaster. <laughs> That's perfect. They really embrace this idea of it being an open-world game. You're free to explore and follow your curiosity. Just lose yourself in this story. Yeah. You know, Enlisted is definitely going to be um, a spotlight for... Well, what you call it, uh, Gamescom, kind of game. which you know, happens like, like in August or um, autumn or whatever you want to call it. In there for each performance, also not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage you're performing. Well, it's definitely a non-linear uh, open world game, but our approach and Sam's approach was um, not unlike a movie or a TV show, and we had to understand it A to B. And so for the most part, that's how we shot it, obviously, when you're shooting a movie or a TV show. Yeah. Um, and in this case, a game, you're going to be shooting out of, out of order. But we actually stayed pretty linear in how we approached the story. We, we went after it like uh, all the other times we were actors. We just went after intention yeah, yeah. And, and what do we want. And, and, um, and we tried to make it as deep. Um, you know, it's got a lot of scope. Yeah. Um, right. But we wanted to, to make it as deep as possible. And Sam is one of the best uh, movie or TV directors I've worked with. So it was uh, very similar. Guy. Nice. Yeah, look, yeah, look at you two. Yeah. Now, of course, I do want to stress to any of you, if you have not played Her Story, it's quick to play through. It's absolutely brilliant. Please check it out in the meantime. It's way closer to where I live. We're Although, course, waiting to find out. When I may go there one out. day. Very Only one hour soon. drive. Very hmm. soon, I promise. We'll have a date soon. Right now, you can go to Steam. You can wishlist on Steam. We all um, Steam. Well, I'm assuming this is going to happen. This is my guess, total guess. For Gamescom, Gaijin is going to uh, mainly talk about Enlisted, but I think they'll drop. They'll have a, a segment dedicated for War Thunder where they'll talk about what I'm assuming is going to be like radar guided stuff. Now, up on the balcony, Frankie's going to be talking to us about a game that my friends year after year after. Oh yeah, the new. This haven't come out yet, have they? How much they've improved it, Frankie? What's going on with Warframe? Well, one of my favorite parts of last year's show, aside from being upstaged by a giant duck, was getting a glimpse at the future of Warframe. And here with the latest look at the next expansion to the universe is Space Mum. All right, Dad, so, what did chat, I miss? Behave yourselves, please, because Mother's here. <laughs> now, Rebecca. Um, uh, we're going to take a look at an amazing trailer that our team has put together. Uh, a lot of our players... What you missed, here, um, what we've been calling Shenmue Project, 3. So about time to, you know, see what we've been doing. Uh, so take a look. A shark game. And uh, Epic Store exclusives. And now they're talking about Warframe. See those very white teeth? That's what happens when you brush your teeth. Actually, I think you need a little bit more than brush your teeth to have them that white. Not a, <laughs> oh, yeah, and also the uh, Germans have completely um, annexed my chat, uh, the stream's chat, so. Rebecca. 
Beggar, it must be so exciting to know that the fans are finally <laughs> there's and you're clearly going all in on the epic space combat. So tell me about the new stuff that players are going to be able to experience. I wasn't shaking before we started talking, and now I am because it's real, because, you know, Empyrean is what we're calling Codename Railjack. It's basically taking the space ninja part of Warframe, sending it back up to space, bringing players that squad gameplay they know, taking the enemies like the corporate... Warframe player, takes the next leap forward. To Chinese text for you. <laughs> and when a fan's going to get to see more... Well, uh, TennoCon is in London, Ontario. It's July 6th, and you can come uh, watch it online on Twitch. We're going to be showing a lot more in our keynote for uh, what Empyrean is going to be. Well, today I'm getting a feel for the suit. So uh, what's the deal with that sweet looking necklace, Brian? How do I get my Tenno arms into it? I cannot say that on Remember 2018 but, Gamescom uh, with Thunder panel ways, but yeah, you just have to watch and how wholesome it was if you watch with all the War Thunder YouTubers. Oh, yeah, that was pretty great. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, and good Unfortunately, luck. I'm not a big enough YouTuber to be invited to that. Okay, now we've seen some amazing stuff today. At least I don't think I am. That'd be interesting. Seriously strange is our next game. Developed by Brooklyn-based studio Feral Cat Den. You mean the Great Leap Forward hacking comic? Odyssey set during the Big Bang. Yeah, it's actually... Introducing to you the tech tree. Fuck <laughs> up, everyone, because we're about to get bonkers. I might actually be able to do that with all the modifications people have made the Toyotas. It's a big bullet. Bearing the guy who stole my Battle of the Bulge line. <laughs> hey, France, that's a nice, uh, Magnet line you got there should be a shame if someone were to go around through the alderings. It would be a shame because then we have a stupid map on War Thunder that's just like massively huge. A premium Toyota truck in the Japanese tech tree. <laughs> that would be amazing. Genesis Noir, just beautiful, stylish art. The next game we're going to take a look at is the twist on the stealth genre. It's called El Ijo, where you play as a six-year-old trying to escape a monastery and find your mother. Mother. Six-year-old trying to escape a monastery. <laughs> Let's take a look. That at has so many bad uh Getty Western inspired project from Studio Handy Games. I, I don't I don't want to know why he's trying to escape it. I have an idea, but I don't want to know why. <laughs> Premium two ideas for Isis Tree. <laughs> Quick, child, get away from the priests. Where you tried to escape your drunken uncle. Eho, once again, is the title of the trailer we just saw. For our final guest tonight, please join me in welcoming from Larian Studios CEO Sven Vinke and from uh, Dungeons and Dragons at Wizards of the Coast, the creative director of Dungeons and Dragons. That guy looks like Mike a very Dungeons and Dragons type Baldur's of guy. Three. Yeah. He needs to go bald. 
He's at this now stage this where you just shave it off. Just recently announced. How did this partnership come about? Uh, we went to... This game is going to be about me going Mexican shit with the border. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was back in 2014. And I tried to convince them back then that they should give us the Baldur's Gate 3 license. And they said, yeah. And uh, so, but we had a long chat about yeah. um, what the vision would be for the game. Uh, yeah, and it's... Then, uh, uh, we kept on I don't know if it's Mexican, other. but um, then, uh, Central American in, for sure. Uh, 2016, I get a phone call from Nathan Stewart, who's the... Where's Gaijin? Gaijin ain't here, man. And Dragons. He said, yeah. you need to come to Seattle right away. Tell that the guy, the guy didn't, uh, doesn't do uh, E3 because they're scared of the <laughs> publicity. And on it was Baldur's Gate 3, and in it was pretty much everything that we talked about. And he says, I'm going to wow. present this to my board. Do you still want to do it? Yeah, of course I still want to do it. <laughs> uh, right. And then a couple of weeks later, we were started negotiating, and here we are. That would be I mean, a great game. You just go oh, to me, drop your lit, drop of D &D, uh, turds on Right. People's cars I mean, for me just to make their day a little bit worse. One was that finally I had the chance to actually play a D&D campaign rather yeah. than having to run them for all my friends. So it just it means so much to us. Baldur's Gate, it's you know such fantastic storytelling, and it's so exciting to see it come to a, not only a new generation of gamers, yeah. but for the gamers who remember the 20 years it's been since the, right. the original, the first two in the series. So it's incredibly exciting. And for us, it really is. It's such an important. Everything part south of the U.S. border is Mexico. We the trailer. Talk to me about some of the story elements, the world elements. What are things we're going to see? In when all can this? we expect a big update well, for War Thunder Gamescom? Right yeah, now. it's um, uh, Gamescom is like two and a half months away. An update's yeah, come up about every city, three months. So uh, we're going to get Gamescom, which is going to talk about what's coming uh, new in the month, new in the patch. Then we'll get the patch. Uh, and then from uh, there on, we're going to get like a so kind of rapid fire patches um, up till Christmas. Iconic creatures, iconic characters, iconic that's at least how they did them um, two years prior. I'm curious about some of the gameplay elements because obviously, you know, there's just been a big resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons, tons of broadcasts on Twitch. Um, I mean, CT system about the 19th. Some of the insane he says a lot of things. Want to do into you know what has to be a structured Brazil. Game. Is the so more poor version of Mexico? Playing. I don't know. Brazil has a lot of cool Basically, stuff to it, uh, and they don't speak handbook? Spanish. Fifth edition, fifth edition. <laughs> yeah. And so we ported uh, as much as we could to the video game. We looked at what works really well. We looked at the things that didn't work that well because it is a video game, and this yeah. was made for uh, uh, tabletop gaming. And uh, so we started modifying those things, and then we had to add things on top of it because yeah. uh, if you play tabletop, you have a game. What could Gaijin show at uh, E3 other yeah. than War Thunder content? Like, um, okay, I don't know. Strategy. Exactly. That's See, it. like so going to E3, that's, that's like a big thing. That if they uh, the we've like been, updated we've the engine very, very to make far. it not look yeah, like a game from 2012. You could actually play out. It. Then you, they could. There would be a reason to go to E3. Shoot off to the Western audiences that their game is now. Modern. And uh, I take the chair over there, I put it on fire, smash it on your head. Uh, well, just as an example. It's just an example. This is fine. We're just talking. We're just uh, talking. These are things that we have to put systems into the game for to, to do it, which are not necessarily going to be described inside of the book. Interesting. I mean, like, Mike, in terms of your role, speaking to Larian Studios, you have tons of data of all the sorts of things that players do. What's the sort of information that you provide in assistance? Well, really what it comes down to is providing the story support. You know, we think of Dungeons & Dragons, the universe of D&D. Uh, it's like a, a toy box for dungeon right. masters and players to go into oh, and build their own stories. <laughs> so working with Larry... Dragon Age 2 rip. What it was just opening up that toy Pillars box of Turning, we forgot about that game. That kind of guidance, you know, like, I remember... One, one Skyrim's of our actually not that great of an RPG, Gate, but um, it has a great like, kind of amount of stuff you can do in it. Cool but the story's kind of lame, and the mechanics are kind of dull. For the, in terms of the system support, I haven't played know, Witcher what, 3. What does it mean in terms of the story for each character, for each, for each character race, each character class? So that if, we need you know, U.S. versus you Brazil Cold War. Last I heard, U.S. and Brazil actually have some pretty positive relations. Really coming to life in an authentic way. We have a lot of German speakers here. It's very true. I don't know why they just like invaded. Release dates and whatnot. But we have a second game that we want to talk about, and on a new technology known as pencil and paper. I understand that there is a tabletop prequel coming for Baldur's Gate. Exactly. So in Baldur's Gate, we think there's one saga. All the different games coming together to yeah. tell one grand story of this city. So uh, on September 17th, we're releasing our next tabletop campaign, uh, Baldur's Gate: Descent into Avernus. And it is the next chapter in the Baldur's Gate saga. Right. And it's a prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. 
So if you haven't played a Baldur's Gate game since Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, this is your chance to check out on the history. It's been about 100 years since the events of Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. So this will give you a chance to check in on the city, to see what's going on, its current state, who the movers and shakers are. We also feature a complete leveled 1 to 13 campaign that takes you from the means so of some Baldur's enlisted. Gate to the depths of hell itself. Like two, I guess. Most of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Question, do you, do you want to redeem? Oh, I think guys are just kind of lazy and they don't want to go bother, like, go right all the way to LA. Well, I have to ask Spencer. Gamescom is much closer to months. Russia. You talk to us about expected release. I ain't even German. I just happen to live exactly on the border with Germany when it's ready. To where if I went to. This is the game that we want to play, so we want to make sure it's really, really good. Buzo or gasoline. Well, I know a lot of people have been I go waiting to Germany. for a long time. And I think I speak for a lot of people here when <laughs> this I say cheaper there? <laughs> take your time. The Are you living you live in France or something? Of the quality. It's going to be fantastic and worth the wait. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me Thank on stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ben and Mike talking about Baldur's Gate 3. Goodbye. Operation Goodbye, Suffer. Oh, yeah, that's going to start. Um, well, I don't want to say soon. Maybe in a month or so. Show has officially concluded. Let's Can it be that Anton is going to go as Ward. Come here, Frankie. Hello. bald as the guy is far right? Oh, well, thank you so much, Sean. <laughs> Last I checked, he had a full head of hair. Today. Guys, thank you so much for coming out to the fifth annual PC Gaming Show. We want to give an enormous thanks to all of you who tuned in live. We want to, of course, thank all of you who personally showed up this morning, and of course the sponsors who helped make this possible. Epic Game Store, iWin, Frontier, Funcom, Paradox, Interactive, Hovercast, Perfect World Rebellion, Tripwire, and Samsung. As you know, PC gaming is a platform, <laughs> a publisher or developer. I see you're so subverting the uh, system. For letting us put on this show every year. Thank you so much. And I gotta ask Frank, any titles you're excited about? Well, I do love a baby elephant, so definitely Planet Zoo, and slightly more awkwardly then, I also wanna eat things. Maybe elephants oh, included, yeah. so man eater, of course. I'm personally looking forward to Songs of Conquest, and as you heard, there's games coming out all across 2019 and into 2020. We hope you all have a fantastic E3. It officially begins tomorrow. Big shout out to all the other press conferences. Hello again, Drop Frames. Good to see you two years in a row. We hope you all have a fantastic time at E3 <laughs> and go play some games and make some friends. See you next year. Bye Thank bye you bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. All right. Sponsors, woo! Big old sponsor right here. Rebellion. Um, but anyways, yeah. Operation Suffer is always, yeah. Real talk, I don't understand what any German part from. <laughs> Gotta download Duolingo from German classes. Oh, uh, Ubisoft always has the best. They got the the corniest things happening there. So yeah, I'll um, be sure to stop by at uh, 1300 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time or your regional equivalent. And I'll be uh, streaming that too. We can t chat about all the silly things. I'm going to end the stream now. <laughs>